So there's a lot of contention in the Xbox community. I mean, Gamescom 2024 lit a fire in the belly of many Xbox gamers and they are infuriated. Um, a lot of them are infuriated with Xbox themselves. Others are infuriated with each other because they don't understand why the other subsect of Xbox gamers are even upset. Uh, and this is all stemming from first the Indiana Jones rumor being put out there and people being disappointed in the potentiality at the time of Indiana Jones releasing on PlayStation 5. But then what is being labeled as the overall gall of Xbox to not only actually release that information to confirm it, but they did it at Gamescom the same time they were even letting their own hardware and console consumers know when it was coming to the Xbox ecosystem. That started it, but it didn't finish. It didn't end there. The following day, you had Phil Spencer just get live on air and say, hey, look, this this is what it is. And he, he tried to pin it on the industry, but he said, hey, and a lot of you guys that were out there that believed what I said earlier about Indiana Jones not being one of the four games that were originally coming, I didn't lie. I didn't say nothing dishonest. It was the truth that it wasn't one of the four games, but I never said that more weren't coming. You know what I mean? And people are trying to nitpick at that, whether he was deceptive, he's lying, and who's folded it? it was he forced by Amy Hood and Sachi and Adele and all this other stuff? And then lastly, we now discover that Avowed is likely launching at 30 frames per second with the developers themselves having the audacity to say, oh, it's a first person game and you don't need, you don't need 60 frames per second, especially, you know, we, we sacrifice 60 frames for all the lighting and stuff like that, right? Like we heard that with Starfield, with Redfall, with so many other games. And it's just, it just feels like bullpucky to a lot of the Xbox brass and something that's being indoctrinated into their developers from Xbox that their gamers don't want. Well, in lieu of all this, we went and grabbed one of the most Xbox faithful previously to talk about this. I mean, this who better to talk to uh, someone about uh, all this stuff going on with Xbox than someone that is on one of the most popular Xbox podcasts out there, XNC Podcast. Yes, we sit with middle-aged gamer, uh, a.k.a. Mag. And boy, does he have a lot to say about this. We're just going to give you a summary of some of this stuff. Let's get into it. Yeah. What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K of Hard Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dosage, and here MM2K Gaming with a special summary video. This is a summary of certain portions. Because <laughs> this interview's too hot for TV. No, I sit down with Mag, my homie Mag, longtime supporter of the platform. But again, an Xbox enthusiast, a little bit longer than I would have tolerated it. But again, nonetheless, um, he's on the front lines. Um, he's still very much connected to the community and more importantly, he has a lot of connections with the Xbox business in entirety. I mean, there was so much tea spilled that, my gosh, <laughs> this interview is just golden. And if people actually pay attention to it, it could break the internet and a lot of the stuff that was spilled. But before we get into all that, do us a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please. So I just want to give you guys and gals just a snippet or two of some of the things that he said from a personal level first we're going to look at a snippet where he talks about being wrong about playstation and some of his earlier approaches and things like that and in the backlash that came after him just simply being honest and correcting the record so let's let's start there and let's do that by going here and playing the video I'll take, I'll, 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 you know what? I'll bend the knee to it. I'll bend the knee. I'll take the L. I absolutely will bend the knee and take the L and say I was wrong. I was wrong about what I was, about what I was saying about PlayStation. 
and when I realized what Sony was doing and how and how good they actually were. And you know when I really realized it was during the pandemic, the beginning of the pandemic, before the PS5 came out, uh, is that we got a PS4 Slim, and I started playing some of the games that I hadn't got. They were on sale, this and that, whatever. And I was playing all those, and I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, these are... And I mean, I was always playing the Uncharted's and things like yeah. that, right? But yeah. then I got in some of the other ones, and I was like, holy shit, these guys are for real. And like I, and then when you get engaged, where you, you know, where you blink once, and then mm -hmm. it's six hours later, you know that they've got you by the balls because you're like, yeah. holy shit, these guys really know how to keep you they engaged in a very well. I hate to use the word twice, but in a very engaging story with engaging gameplay loop yeah. and, and and incredible bombastic, um, uh, you know, budgets that go into these. I mean, let's face it, we understand that Sony is also a Hollywood studio. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they know how to put out a blockbuster. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. they they do that in these gaming spaces. You can't compete with that kind of with that kind of bra you know that gravitas. It's almost impossible. So Andrew Wilkins, you're not wrong. And I and I almost feel embarrassed by some of the shit I said. And and uh, I did the videos. Uh, you know the videos were kind of funny. I was just being a goof, whatever else. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, and then, you know what the funny thing is? I've actually stopped making those videos <laughs> because. I stopped making those videos not because I'm like, oh, they're cringe or, you know, like this, you know, the kids say, oh, he's being cringe. You fucking cringe. <laughs> fucking old man. Go, you know, go, 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 go retire, old man, you fucking boomer. You know, whatever, and all yeah. these things. I, was, I didn't stop because of that. I stopped because I was wrong. And joking or not, it's not funny when it's not right. Yeah. And the thing is, is that when I started speaking against like the other stuff and i really started saying guys I, you know like listen just as a consumer never mind is like whatever if you want to be a warrior in some console war bullshit whatever the thing is is that you know you, you gotta you should respect a person's decisions as to what they want to do based on what they want to do let them do what they want to do and i'm totally open if people say that Xbox is the greatest thing ever, I'm like, hey, man, God speak. Have, go, go have fun. Are you having fun? And they say yes. I said, then God bless, say less. Go have fun. Enjoy yourself. I will never shit talk anybody for enjoying something. But you know what happened to me? I stopped. I started saying some nice things about Sony and realizing what they were doing. And then I started pointing out that Microsoft absolutely sucked fucking balls this generation. And it's been four years of nothing but an absolute <laughs> disappointment. I give this generation a one out of ten. And I said it on XNC. I said it on, on Mooch's show. I said it everywhere else. I said the Xbox One launch was a hundred times better than what they did this launch. And it's mm -hmm. and you know what? And it's showing in its numbers. Yeah. It's showing in its numbers. Look at the numbers now. They're selling. They sold more Xbox Ones in what was considered to be one of the worst generations yes. in video yes. gaming history. Yes. And yet the series consoles are doing worse. It is beyond comprehension that. This, so I start pointing out this obvious truth, and mm -hmm. they block me. They stop watching me. They start shit talking me. People send me uh, threats, uh, uh, all kinds of stuff. And like horrible things said, uh, says, say horrible things to me, and this and that. And I'm like, are you guys for fucking real? Like, are you like, are you that? Like, are you that? Are you gonna just gonna? You're gonna? And and, and it's fine that you want to do what you want to do, but I'm like, are you gonna go this far? And you're gonna defend to the death a mediocre experience? I am tired of defending them. I am tired of waiting for them. You remember the old saying? I said it to Mooch last night. He almost choked on his on his drink. Uh, remember, I said, "Hey, Mooch, remember the first six years of the Xbox One? It was uh, from for, sorry from 2013 to 2019. It was wait till the next E3. Then they canceled the next E3. And then it was uh, wait till next year when all the you know, wait till next year. Next next year is going to be the year. You remember that? And then look yeah. at this generation, 2021. Microsoft won. By the way, they won. I'm sure you know they won Publisher of the Year that year. Yeah. Okay, they had a great year. 2022, they released fucking nothing, right? And so then everybody said, ah, don't worry. 2023 is the year of Xbox. Fantastic. What did they release in 2023? Two bombs and a mediocre experience, right? And Hi-Fi Rush, which nobody played, by the way. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which. Mm -hmm. I did. Uh, <laughs> there he is. Here, he is. Here I, got some, I got some stats for you. So, yeah, that right there, I, I cut it off right at that point because you, you, you're you going to want to watch the interview because he goes into like deep diving detail on how he got to that path. And that, that you know, I might, I might as well just play the whole interview, right? <laughs> so you need to go check that out. But secondly, what I want to do 
is I want to show you guys and gals something else, right? Um, not only did he talk about, you know, taking a, a accountability for what he said about PlayStation that, that now he realizes was wrong um, and addressing the backlash, which he does on multiple occasions and he, he goes into further detail. But I asked him specifically, I said, Meg, why do you think Xbox is struggling? And he has an interesting response to that. Let, let, let's play that. Um, the thing is, is that Sony backs up what they do with 10 out of 10 quality. They back them everything up, everything they say. Their arrogance, mm -hmm. they have arrogance, let's yeah. face it. Their oh, yeah. arrogance, mm -hmm. the pricing, yeah. the not giving a rat's ass. Hey, we're mm -hmm. charging an extra 10 bucks. Take it or leave it, motherfucker. We don't care. But mm -hmm. you know what? They back it up with game of the year quality, 10 out of 10 scores, engaging experiences that everybody talks about, right? We're not talking about just other people. My mom, say, hey, honey, did you watch that Last of Us show? I heard it's a wonderful yeah. game. And I'm yeah. like, well, it's not a wonderful game. I wanted to commit suicide, but you know, it's, you know, it's a game. I mean, I love that. Last of Us is my favorite series of all time. Um, but like my mom is sitting down. My mom is like almost 70. Mm -hmm. And she's sitting down watching Last of Us, for Christ's sake. You know what I'm saying? And it gets into the zeitgeist, the public zeitgeist. They're able to tap into that uh, pop culture, and then they back it up with quality. You know what I'm saying? Quality. Even I, I don't give a shit what anybody says. Uh, Days Gone, what was it, like a 60-something Metacritic? Yeah, yeah, what, that, my top yeah. five, yeah. my top five games of the last generation, one of them was, was Days Gone. Game. That was a great game. I adored that game. That I know that game. King Thrash talk. I heard. I listened to the King Thrash interview. Uh, King Thrash. Yeah. You and King Thrash were talking about Days Gone, and yeah. uh, he said some funny things, which obviously I can't repeat, but it was funny. <laughs> uh, but anyways, the point was is that um, you know they back up everything with quality. Yeah. The problem that I'm seeing, and this has been a consistent problem now for about I don't know about ten years straight. Is that Microsoft does all this, does all that? This is the strategy. No, now this is the strategy. This is. No, I don't care how many strategies you got. You can have a hundred different yeah. business strategies. Yeah. The problem is you're backing it up with mediocrity. Mediocrity. And the, and that is why people are walking away. At the end of the day, brother, it is not about console wars. What flag you're waving? Who this? Who that? If your games are shit then people are not going to continue to support it. And they have been nothing but shit, except for one game in 10 years. I swear to God, I'm saying this right now. The only game that I liked that I could say was an absolute 10 out of 10 banger for me mm -hmm. was Psychonauts 2. Okay. Psychonauts, okay. if you got, by the way, if anybody has the uh, in, in the chat has the option of playing Psychonauts 2, mm -hmm. um, go play that game. Holy shit, what an incredible platforming game. The, the amount of, of ingenuity, the love, and the, um, and the cleverness of this game is unmatched. And it is an absolute masterpiece for me. I, I thought it was a travesty that it didn't win Game of the Year. And it was nominated for Game of the Year. But it didn't win Game of the Year. But to me, it was an absolute masterpiece. That was, uh, what's his name? Tim Schafer? Is that his yeah, name? Tim Schafer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I call. I mean, the guy. Just like, I just call him like an older Jack Black. Uh, but anyway, he looks <laughs> yeah, like him. Yeah, yeah but, that's what you know what I mean. Jack Black vibes. Yeah. yeah, he's he's like an old Jack Black. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> that game was a masterpiece. Other than that, they have released consistent mediocrity, and that is what it's all about. We could talk about this, brother, to a blue in the face. We could talk about how how this one's good. This guy's, the, you know, this one's. Uh, Phil said this. This guy said that. It doesn't matter. If you don't, if you, your number one priority is to release a video fucking game. And if you can't release a video game that is A, good, and people want to talk, uh, go back and engage with, then you have failed. How do you fail with Halo? A Halo is a surefire hit. Even Halo 5, everybody's like, ah, oh, Halo 5 wasn't very good. It still sold like 7 million copies on a console nobody was buying. Because you're mad, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, are yep. you out of your mind? It wasn't even a, and now you can't even get Halo people to play it after the first week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And not only that, after the first week, and then they tr then they were going to release a free to play. Nobody played it at free to play. And then mm -hmm. a year later, they're like, well, we're going to give you two new maps. Thank God in heaven. You gave us two maps in 12 months. Holy Moses. Please, someone save me from all the content. I can't keep up. Like, are you, are you out of your mind? But anyways, the consistent mediocrity is their number one problem and will continue to be their problem unless they can do it on a consistent basis.
uh, quality. You can't release one great game and then three shit games. You cannot do this. The only so we're gonna we're, we're gonna end it there as far as that yeah that clip. Look, man, uh, I'm telling you, great insight, personal insight from Mag, but he has even better connections. And throughout this interview, he's dropping and spilling tea all over the place. Like we really, we had to, he was spilling so much tea. We all had to change our trousers. Like you really want to check out this interview, find out what was behind Mike Yaboro, Pete Hines leaving a lot of the, the chaos that's happening at the, um, at Xbox, what the Activision Blizzard and Bethesda people said to Sarah Bond during town halls will amaze you. Get all this tea, all this insight from Mag, again, co host of XNC Podcast, one of the biggest um, Xbox podcasts out there today. So definitely check out that full interview. Um, if you're watching this as part of the um, NRO podcast experience. Like if, if, if you're watching this as part of that podcast, stay tuned. We got a great podcast where we're going to talk about this and a lot of things going on avowed. We're going to be asking PlayStation now, what are you going to do? Because, you know, now you fully have the mantle and other things like that. And, but if you're not watching this as part of that, you're watching this as a separate VOD, what you're going to want to do is order to hear that podcast, click the box to your left, right? And in order to see the entire interview with Mag that you definitely don't want to miss, click that box to the right. It's going to bring you to the entire series and you can go check any of them out, including Mag's interview. With that said, we appreciate everybody. Thank you so much. Until next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.